It is literally a hot mess. All right, everyone. The audio on this one is gonna be bad because I am rushing to get a reflow done on this computer because the guy's going into the military. Um, we have a Dell Latitude 5580. Um, and just to give you an idea of the disassembly, you have this frame, the hard drive goes on top of the frame, um, the battery goes on top of the frame, there's wires through the frame that will have to be threaded back through the frame um, on all ends. And I've already done most of the disassembly, so this video is not going to actually show you the disassembly. Um, I actually don't have time to disassemble it and reassemble it twice. I have to get this done. If this reflow doesn't work, he has to go buy a new computer today. So one way or the other, um, I have to proclaim it dead or alive. And that's my job today. So I've gotten the frame off, which had a bunch of screws through it. It's pretty straightforward to figure out how to get it off. You basically just keep taking screws out of it until the frame comes off. But um, these two screws don't come out. You can see them through the frame, but they don't come out. And now to get the motherboard out, we need to pull this fan, obviously. Um, fan connector. Fan should lift right up. Yep. Um, the heat sink, I'm gonna leave on if I can until later when we do the actual reflow work. We're gonna reflow the CPU and possibly this chipset, so I may need to just go ahead and remove this CMOS battery as well. I don't like removing CMOS batteries, but in this particular case, it's kind of necessary. Okay, the RAM will also need to be removed. This computer is flashing two ambers and either four or six LED or whites, um, which four is an error indicating a memory problem. Six is an error indicating a system board problem, a chipset problem. Um, it just suddenly stopped working on him and changing memory sticks did not help. So that reeks of a problem with the ball grid array underneath this thing. I am frantically taking screws out because this, I have a lot to do and I really didn't have time to do this, but you know, I'm trying to fit one more in. I mean, I don't know what to say. Just trying to get one more in there. Okay, something is hung over here. I can feel something hanging. I've gotten all these other wires unhooked, but something's stuck. Oh, okay, maybe not. All right, reflow time. Gently move that knot over here. Um, I actually have a nice insulating rework mat coming in and a hot air workstation. So I'm not gonna be doing these uh, ghetto reflows with a heat gun for paint stripping anymore, but, oh, that, oh, I didn't even think of that. My IR thermometer's behind the camera. That's kind of a problem. Uh, I'll probably need to redo this CPU grease because it's five years old. And, oh, I bet that's, I bet that's why it's messed up. Look, it won't come off. It is stuck. Come on, let go. That is baked really bad. I bet you the CPU overheated and broke some balls loose on the ball grid array. All right. Just uh, because I will have to do this anyway, um, it's, it's already very obvious that this is going to have to have new heat sink grease put on it. That stuff is baked pretty solid. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it scraped, if it literally just scraped off. Oh, that's gross. That is really gross. Uh, yeah, it's gummy, actually. It's kind of, it's like a, like a sticky sludge. Really, uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. And I have to literally scrape it off, which I don't like to do, but uh, the good news is that I'm not, actually required to scrape it off of all of it, but um, 
I like to when I can, but I really don't have time right now. I need to get this done. And I don't have time to worry about this extra goo that's just kind of floating around. Clean that surface real nice. Uh, give it one more rub down here. Yummy. Okay. Set this aside because that's not going to be a thing either. Um, all these plastic things are going to melt, so I need to remove them and put them back later. They're still sticky, so... And it's fairly obvious where they go. It'd be kind of hard to mess that up, at least. Oh, man, that's... Ugh. Just in case I'm reflowing both chips, I, I, it costs so little time to do both of them. Look, there's plastic down here too. That's that's definitely going to get trashed. So let's just go ahead and remove it. Try not to rip it. Just remove it. Don't rip it. Come on. I actually don't know how necessary this even is because if you look at it, this board sits on top of yet another insulating layer. So, okay. So we're going to reflow this. Let me get my tools. All right. So in my tool bin, what's what's in my what's in my camera bag? A uh, Lutz and a very expensive lens and a five thousand dollar camera that I run at ISO sixteen thousand and a one ten thousandth shutter speed because I'm insane. No, none of that. Stop that. Uh, what's in my camera bag doesn't matter. Mm. Sorry guys, that was a camera joke, but I'm doing a computer video, so we'll just pretend that this is like the schizophrenic portion of our broadcast. Um, I use this aluminum foil as a poor man's heat shield to keep the table from melting too much. Then, wait, did I get the wrong one? I got the wrong one. Um, which one's the nice long one? That, this one actually looks like the one I carved out for Intel's like this. All right, so do that, do that, and mold. These are This is just aluminum foil. It's heavy duty aluminum foil that I have folded over and then um, basically I just crimp it down to cover the socket, that whatever it is that I'm hitting with a heat gun so that I don't apply heat to other parts of the board too heavily. I don't want to melt down everything, I just want to melt the blobs underneath this one. So, <clears throat> this is the part of the video where I make Lewis Rossman and his hot air rework stuff look like a god. Um, we're going to reflow this. The hot air gun, uh, the temperature gun I use, we need to hit about 360, 370 Fahrenheit to get this reflowed. I don't like to use this on high, but I may have to punch it just a bit. I hope nothing catches on fire. Just to get things warmer quicker. All right. Oh, you can't even see this, can you? I'm actually kind of afraid to get it too close over there, though, because there's another laptop over there I really don't want to melt. So, you can't see that display, can you? I mean, I can. There you go. It's not exactly, this is not the most accurate pointing thing, if you get me. Yeah. Maybe I can point it so you can see it, maybe not. I don't know. I also don't want to melt down my thermal thing here. I usually do it from this angle. I probably should just stick to what I do normally. And we're at 280. Uh, have I mentioned I really don't like doing reflows? Partly because of this chunky heat gun, it's brutish. I don't, I don't even know how best to describe it. It just, it's a very primitive weapon for a precise part. But 
people throw Xbox motherboards in ovens at 375 and fix them. So they can do it with an oven. Why can't I do it with a paint stripping heat gun, right? Anyway, I'm showing 346. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but if it's pointed right, at 357 now. Yeah, that's at 374. I better back up and see if it's. I don't want to overheat it. Nah, that's not showing 374. That's showing like 350. Come on, this thing really needs to just hurry up. Um, when I get my proper hot air rework station in here, this is going to be a thing of the past, I hope. But until then, this is the tool I have to work with. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, that shows 370. We're going to go ahead and back off. And, yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that almost certainly got up to temperature. Actually, it's it's cooling a bit too fast due to the fan in here, so I'm going to keep it from cooling too quickly using yet more heat. Dear Power Bill, I hate you. Um, now, you, you don't want it to cool too fast or you'll end up with problems, but... <sighs> okay. And I really need to move it over. quite hot. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I melted anything, so that's cool. Um, we need to move this board over. It's cooled off enough, it shouldn't cause any problems to slide everything. I actually need that other heat shield, though. Ooh, this just got delicate, didn't it? This one needs to go here now. And we need to move this here. All right. Give me back my foil. All right. And here's, man, that's hot. I have to be real careful not to burn myself on the existing hotness. All right, there's memory slots close to this, so I kind of want to be careful closer than the CPU. I know it doesn't quite look like it, but it is. Okay. Mold the foil to the work area. Get heating. Oh my god, I'm rinsed. I really, really am um, running out of time. I, don't, I can't do this. I'm not going to have enough time. I, if nothing else, I have a bank run to do, so... And it's 423, so... While it seems like I have time, you have to remember I have to put this sinking, this sinking thing back together on top of everything else. Yeah, me with my crude heat gun mess here. Uh, it is literally a hot mess. This one's heating up much faster than the other one did, probably because there's a lot less to it. Let's uh, be careful. Try not to overdo it. Also, probably because the other one was already, you know, heated up. This part of the board probably got some residual heat. All right, we're up to... We're up to... Three, in the 350, ah, now I'm seeing 370, so let's... Back it away a bit here. All right. Don't want it to cool too fast. I've really gotten used to these paint stripping heat guns. They're, uh, I mean, they're obviously not perfect by any means, but they are shockingly good once you get used to working with them. Okay, I need that. Just go away. Okay. Hot. Everything is very hot. Uh, All right, I can probably, uh, oof. I really just need to wait for it to cool down. So 
I'm gonna wait for it to cool down. I'll be right back and I'll probably go do my bank run. Okay, I got my errands done and I'm back. We're gonna put this back together. This is the crown jewel of this video uh, because we're gonna put it back together. I mean, yeah, what else is there to say? Uh, we're gonna assemble this disaster and I am, <laughs> I've not been looking forward to doing this. Because getting it apart was bad enough. So let's see if I have any more MX-4 so we can get the heat sink put back on. All right, come on. Oh, please tell me I'm not out. Okay, I'm not. It was just being greedy. Just need enough thermal compound to do this one processor, baby. Just one processor. That's all I ask, just one. I just need one CPU done. Uh, I probably used too much there, actually. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Put that away. Heat sink. Oh wait, we need to put these back. I probably should have done that first. Okay, now, um, some of you will remember that I said something to the effect of you'll be able to figure out where everything goes. And here I am trying to figure out where everything goes and it took me a minute to realize where everything went. But, and I did ultimately figure it out. Don't know how adhesive that's actually gonna be, but it's okay. There were three of them, I remember. This one, I think, went around the chipset here. Okay. Ooh, ooh, uh-oh, thermal paste on me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay, better watch that. Actually, why don't I go ahead and put this back, just so I don't have to watch that. How's the distribution on that paste? It looks good. It looks real good. Okay, let's get the uh, four CPU screws here taken care of. Uh, one. I usually don't follow these number patterns. I kind of don't care. But in this particular case, I will make an exception and actually follow the numbers. All right. By the way, for everyone watching, um, I am sorry that I wasn't able to give you a closer up view. I didn't have time to switch lenses on this camera. So I have a 16 millimeter 32 equivalent prime lens on. And uh, I suppose the, the one that can go from 12 to 35 would let me get a lot closer. But uh, that just wouldn't be as fun, would it? Anyway, um, I'm probably cropping in and posting this in 1080 instead of 4K because of it. Um, wasn't my choice, but like I said, this job has to be done quick. And I don't even know if a reflow will fix this, but if a reflow won't fix this, there's no fixing this. And that's just the end of that. I really hope that that stays adhered to the motherboard because if it doesn't, we're gonna have a problem. Okay. This insulated layer here. And it can be difficult sometimes to figure out exactly how things went, but I think I have this upside down. I say that because it's not going, but this way it is. Yep, I had it upside down. So that was wrong. Uh, I may still have it off by a bit, I'm not sure. Um, no, that, that looks about right, actually. I could always review the video, I suppose, but uh, what's the fun in that? Okay, we now have a motherboard. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. So our motherboard needs to go back, and there's about a billion cables that need to not fall underneath it. Uh, I don't have a good solution for that, other than maybe to shove it here and get the cables underneath, but or detach them entirely. But I don't know. Well, one way or the other, you have to get the motherboard back in, and uh, it, it's not going to play nice. Yeah, they got stuck right there last time, apparently. God, get that VGA port and that post through. I don't. 
I don't know that that goes in any better than that either. It's a little off. It's a little off. Oh, there it went. I felt it. It fell down. But the power socket over here, all the way down here, there's a power socket that I hope is on the in the frame. Um, the power socket header fell under the board. So that needs to come over the board. Which means the board needs to get up. And maybe I should have removed the power socket. So, lesson number zero, maybe you should have removed the power socket, smart guy. Yeah. Alright, so that fell in line. That fell in line. There is a piece of paper in here. Why is there a piece of paper in here? What is going on there? Hold on. Hold on. I don't have any tweezers handy, but there is literally a little piece of paper right here. Like, almost like it was shoved in a port. What? <sighs> well, it's just like a piece of paper. I'm not going to worry about it. It's, uh, it's just not worth the trouble. Alright, so the board is in, physically. Um, the power connector... Let's just go ahead and plug this up because it's hard to do and before we put any screws in it's really tight power connector here it needs to just go all right now let's put back what we can that holds this board down we have this little bracket here that is it goes to this USB type C port here um, these slightly longer than the CPU fan screws go through it I believe I think maybe only one went through it though I don't recall exactly. Um, the other problem is actually, let's see, does this take the long screws? I think it does, yes. Pretty sure it does. Let's go ahead and just put both long screws in because it looks like that one takes both longs. Then we have the display cable here. At least it looks like the display cable, which should take shorter screws because it just has a metal bracket here um, and that bracket goes over that and if we drop a couple short screws on it that should retain it okay so display cable should be retained now two screws not one there we go uh, I just realized I didn't push the DC jack cable quite all the way in it was a little crooked that's okay we'll figure it out the um, speaker wire over here actually goes over that giant um, frame thing. Now, that's the other thing, is that this frame thing is a real pain. Um, because some of these wires have to come out, and the frame... Um, some of them go over the frame, some of them go under. In general, it seems the rule with this frame is the wires that go directly to the motherboard go under the frame. So while we're here and this motherboard's not tightened down yet, let's just go ahead and put all these little flat cables, uh, all three of them, I think. Let's go ahead and put all three of them back in. There we go. And the more flat cables go to the board itself. So that should be the end of that. We should put some screws back in the board now. Look for the arrows. There's one here. Um, it is beside the power jack. I'm gonna actually check the power jack and hinges. Just check these screws. I always check screws for things like hinges. Yep, that one loosened. This one's probably also loosened. Yeah, all these back screws are loose, so let's tighten them up. I knew I felt a wobble. I was, I just wasn't sure where it was coming from, but it seems that there are in fact some loose hinge screws. So we we'll tighten up the hinges. Um, there's another motherboard screw. It goes over here where this arrow is located. All right. Okay, and let's see what else. Uh, there's another one here. This is 2x5. Now, I could have sworn there was something else that goes there. This is a 2x3. There is another. There's a 2x5 screw that goes here. Now, if there's a 2x5 that's supposed to go through here, 
I'm going to assume this longer screw is that one. There's also a 2x3 screw that goes here. So let's go ahead and put one here. You know, if, if it'll cooperate, that is. Are there any more arrows that I have missed? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't see any more of these gold-lined screw sockets. Um, there are two 2x3s, but they go to the fan. So we will put the fan back. Um, the fan, I know, goes underneath everything. Let's plug the cable up before we screw it down, just in case we have to wobble it around a bit. I don't know why we would. These CPU fan power cords are extremely fragile, um, so be very careful when you put them back, because they will break. They will break and they will laugh at you and not care what you think. Okay. What else? Yeah, so now our CPU fan is mounted. Um, these major cables are also mounted. And I have one more two by three, I have three two by threes plus a screw for the, yeah, also probably a two by three for the Wi-Fi card. So now we need to there's nothing else we can really do. Let's go ahead and put the RAM just so that it's there. Um, when That's not the correct RAM. This is the RAM. That was the RAM I was testing with. Yeah, let's put this RAM in place. Boom. All right, we need to get this frame established. Now, the problem with this is there's a lot to it. So we will oh, let's lay it down and see what we're up against here. So. Those wires go underneath, but when I put this together, they were above. So what I'm going to assume here is that we are supposed to put these flat cables through this slot here, and then they come back down, um, which is a little weird if you ask me, but well, what do I know? Um, yeah, that's exactly what has to happen. That's stupid, but that's the way that it's built. So that's the way it's gonna be done. So what I'm gonna try is to get this frame in here and in order, just shuffle these wires up. Come on, up. You can come through, it's okay. All right, using my pry tool that kind of pivots a little. These other ones are actually longer than the keyboard, I think. I may have to change my strategy, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah, these are longer. In fact, it looks like this blue one is the longest one. But both of these are the longer ones. And the keyboard is the shorter one. So I'm going to reach through here and get this keyboard cable through here. Come on. Don't be shy. There you go, big boy. Yeah, don't be shy. All right. So that's those. Um, the Wi-Fi goes through it, but we'll deal with that later. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and get these flat connectors here. Keyboard. Come on. Yeah, there's actually a lot of connectors on here that don't have anything plugged in, and I, I always wonder what they go to when I see stuff like that. Something of note, by the way, there is an M2 slot right here. Um, I don't, I don't really see a mount for it. I'm assuming there's some kind of special mounting bracket that they would give you if you had an M2 SSD, but I do not see one. This computer is actually like right at the start of where you could get M2 SSDs in laptops at all. Okay, this audio cable needs to go here. And the problem is it also needs to go through here. So it kind of, you kind of have to insert the audio cable while putting it under this tab. The Wi-Fi is going to be terrible. Let me just go ahead and put some screws back in this frame. So we have an M2x3 here that I know for a fact held it. We have a couple more. 
I mean, you can you can see where they go. There's tons of them. There's one here. I just need it to stay put while I do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and those are my fives. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of these two by threes in, and I'll put the rest of them in later um, once I find them. The Wi-Fi thing. Let's go ahead and thread the Wi-Fi back in. So the Wi-Fi goes through the left here. We'll. This is why I like my soft metal pry tool. I can just gently poke these wires and they'll go where they need to go. And I don't have to worry about them. There we go. Black on the left, white on the right. Okay. Come on. Get down there. Down there. Don't fall out either. This this thing is really trying to drop out. All right. Pull up some slack. Work it around this corner tab here, and they need to be snapped down. Let's see, main is white is here. Uh, this part always stinks, especially with these newer Wi-Fi cards with the teeny tiny little connectors that are super easy to snap off. This part is no fun. Alright boys, let's get this done. Now you've probably seen a lot of my head, aren't you? That's not very fun either. Yeah. I mean, un unless you're into poorly kept bald heads, but whatever. That's kind of weird, man. Not the way I run my computer shop, man. Alright. Just the tension on these cables. I'm starting to think there's too much slack that's been pulled in and that I need to pull it back. Um, because the tension on these cables is enough that they are not staying put on the Wi-Fi card. And these are always so hard to put back. You really just... And it's really easy to break them off. And I don't like them. I cannot stand them. And when they popped off, I was sad because that meant that I had to break put them back and I don't want to put them back I just want them to go away and never exist again but that conflicts directly with my customers desire to have Wi-Fi oh and uh, you really want to slap in the face remember there is a decent probability that everything I just did will not produce a working computer so all this could be for naught Oh, you. Oh, you almost fell in line. You almost, you were almost there. You were almost there and you didn't want to go. That's too bad. Uh, I'm going to bend it a little bit because it's just not going. Nope, it does not want to go down where it belongs. I guess right on top of it at this point. Now, this should be an educational moment for you if you didn't understand why manufacturers were putting this ridiculous looking metal tab over the Wi-Fi connectors. It's because these things will just pop right off, which you can imagine is not very helpful when you're trying to actually have working Wi-Fi. You probably need those Wi-Fi connectors to not go anywhere. And guess what? Now they're not going anywhere. Ta-da! Okay. All right. Now we can make better progress. CMOS battery. All right. If these things are freshly removed and not bent up too much, you, you can usually just see the way that they were originally put in and everything is pretty straightforward. I'm worried it'll get in the way of the hard drive connector though. Okay, we have, oh Jesus, I just realized this battery is inflated. I can't put that back in that computer. In fact, I don't want it in this place at all. Um, that's a problem, that is a problem. There's one more two by three here. Yeah, I can't put that battery back in that computer. That That's a complication to be sure. Um, 
That is, that is dangerous. The battery is puffed up which means that it's internally damaged and releasing gases and I cannot put it back in this computer. So... Of course the computer may simply not work. Now wouldn't that just be wonderful if the computer just doesn't work? I still need to figure out where I lost those 2x5 screws. I don't see them anywhere. Maybe that's what I heard fall down earlier, but didn't see. No, I don't see any on the floor. Well, the truth is they're not... Oh no, guess what? Oh, I'm very smart. Oh, I'm very smart. This, this is, this is, this is wonderful. This, Wow, I uh, could not possibly have made myself look more foolish, could I? Okay, I s I've already screwed them into the holes, because I'm dumb. Or at least this one. The other one, not so sure, but this one's definitely in the hole already and shouldn't be. There we go. <sighs> what a nuisance. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. That is what happens, man. There's another one that apparently goes here. Um, although, frankly, I don't care because I don't have to. Um, this battery is bad. I am not, I cannot, I cannot put this battery back in this computer ethically. I'm already worried about it catching on fire here, so. Let's get the wire out. Get this puffing, dangerous POS out of here. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull these battery screws out of this battery. So that he can put in a new one in the future if he needs to, but I don't think I can. I don't think it'll, they'll come out. They're stuck. Hmm. Nah, they're stuck. They're stuck good. That thing is puffed up, too. I don't like this. Uh, well, that's the only screw that won't come out. Let's just leave it alone for now. All right, so no battery. That's really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Um, but, as they say, them's the ropes. So I got no more screws that I can put in this thing. I don't see any anywhere, so I just kind of have to assume that that's okay. So let's finish the hard drive screws and be done with it. Um, also, the hard drive cable needs to be hooked up, and we'll do one more check just to be sure all the wires have been plugged up. Come on. Come on. Okay. Now, this battery cable needs to go back in here just because if he gets a battery, he's going to need the cable. So we'll put the battery cable in, uh, but it's just going to have to float over here somewhere. And that battery is not going back in this computer due to the sheer danger of it. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, no, that's not it. Hard drive cable, genius. Plug hard drive cable in, genius. Look around, see if there's any more. I don't see any evidence of any more cables. Um, I think this is backwards too. Yeah, it was backwards, okay. Uh-huh. Uh, all the cables are in, the RAM's in. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Now the one, the one thing I'm gonna do at this point is plug it up and just see if it works. No battery, see if it works or if I was wasted my time. I'm not getting an amber light yet. Doesn't mean anything. Could still not work. There could still be a problem. 
Um, the light came on over here. Wait a minute, what? What are we doing? What are we doing? Did I plug everything back up? Yeah, video cable's in. Does caps lock work? Caps lock is not toggling. The power light was on, even though the power was not on, and now it's off again. Show me, come on. So now I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting any flashing light. I think this computer may be well and truly screwed. Uh, oh, no, 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 come back, come back. Whoa, no, come back, come back. Hey, look at this. Do it again, do it again. Yes. Yes. It's going to be pissed that the CMOS settings are toast. But yeah, look. It works. The hinges are wobbly as all get out, and I really don't know why. Maybe because it's not all the way together. I'll check the hinges later, but it works, boys. It works. I don't want to know what that liquid is on that screen. And that's the hazards of this sign. Uh... Okay. Uh huh. All right. So there you go. Um, the rest is just screws in the bottom cover. This is awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You can support me financially using my website, jodybruchon.com, and the various links there to support. Uh, buy me a coffee if this helped you. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and take care. Bye-bye.